I overdosed and I was dead for 11 minutes. I had no intention of burying my son, and yet we did. We live in fear every day that it's going to be her last. I started using heroin, I believe, I was about 18 or 19. I was 13 years old. 16 when she started using heroin. My name is Matt. I started using drugs when I was 15. My daughter Katie, um, 16, when she started using heroin. Um, my name is Katie, I'm 17. I was 13 years old and it, it was peers. I, I wanted to fit in with my friends. When I was 16, I got a boyfriend who was using heroin and after like a year of us dating I finally tried it. Every person's different and the opiates and the benzos that are out there are deadly and you never know if you're going to be that one person that tries something one time and then you never get to go back. Um, you're, you're hooked and so I would think long and hard before choosing any kind of drug like that. I did everything I could to get the money that I needed, including stealing, robbing, manipulating people, manipulating my family. It was hard. It was the hardest thing that I've ever been through. It was just miserable waking up every morning knowing that you had to come up with the money to get what you had, get what you needed to feel okay. And if it came down to me needing drugs or going to work, I was going to get drugs. I definitely want to get clean. I'm just not ready to get clean right now. I really just like getting high and I don't like myself when I'm sober. I don't know, I've tried to get clean so many times and I just go right back to it. And I'm completely up for getting clean when I'm high, but then when I get sober, I'm like, I can't do this and I'm going use, so. He was in and out of, I've lost track of how many rehabs and eventually started to have run-ins with the law. Um, he didn't really steal for uh, his heroin money. He was always working, but it just escalated and escalated and then he wound up in prison and he got sent to um, rehab and got involved in the drug court program. And we thought he was doing really well with that. Um, he graduated, but um, 19 days later he overdosed. In the end, I had burned all of my bridges um, I, I had come out of jail and, and I tried to stay clean on my own uh, and, and I just, I couldn't do that. And, and for me, the last six months of my using was horrific. Um, I was isolated and, and it came to the point that even though I knew that I needed help, I, I was afraid. I was afraid, I was afraid of living with drugs and I was afraid of living without drugs and for me what it took was an attempt at my own life. You know after I started using drugs my drive and ambition to become anything you know later on just went away and that's affected me now because you know I, I haven't I haven't been able to complete college or anything and um, it's just really it, it's really taken me on a journey and it almost took my life you know about a mile from here I overdosed and I was dead for 11 minutes. Some lady that was walking down the side of the road with her dog decided to look in my car and she had enough concern to call 911. The paramedics got there and they revived me and they said that, you know, due to my temp the temperature in my body that I was dead for 11 minutes with no heartbeat. And I got to the hospital and they said, I don't know how you're still alive or how you don't have brain damage, but you're here. And um, I had clean time before I did that, and I saw my parents' faces when they came in the hospital room, and that really hurt me. And uh, that's when I made, decided to make the decision to go to long-term treatment. I stayed there for 15 months in New York, and uh, that was really the only thing that worked for me. Every time I came home from other treatment centers, I would just go right back to it because I'd go back to the same friends, the same area, with the same people. And you know what they say, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And eventually, you know, I could hold it up for a couple weeks, but eventually, I just go right back to it. The advice that I would have is, is first know that there is hope. Know that you don't have to ever do it alone. Know that you too can recover, that you are worthy of a better life. And, and to make the call, call, call a crisis hotline, call the health department, call a counselor, call a professional that can help you know where your kids are just 
know as much as you can about everything they're doing and don't be afraid to ask your kids questions even if you feel it's it, you know it's uncomfortable and, and trust your instincts because we for so long we knew that something was wrong but I guess we didn't know what questions to ask and we just never in our wild and we didn't know anything about heroin you know it never even crossed my mind that that's what it was when he told us you know we were just in shock I had a young lady that came to me that that had been a resident and um, she was no longer a resident and she came to me and she said can I come home can I come home I just need to be back with you and um, and I told her absolutely you can uh, she was with a group of people and and I said to her go to go to a meeting tonight go to a meeting don't pick up and um, call me tomorrow call me tomorrow morning when you get up and I didn't hear from her Three days later, she was found in her apartment. She died. She was the mother of a beautiful four-year-old daughter, and um, she wanted to use one more time. She just wanted to use one more time, and that one more time killed her. It was October 29th, 2013. It had to be after six o'clock or so, and someone knocked at the door. And I opened the door and there were two plainclothes policemen who introduced themselves. And I think I actually said this. I said, what did, what did he do now or what happened now? And they didn't come right out and tell me. They asked me some questions. Like, I remember they said, when was the last time you saw him? And they, they asked me a bunch of questions. And then finally they said, we're sorry to tell you um, that he died. And um, they, were, they were very very nice and very sympathetic and um, I, I asked what happened and they told me that um, he'd been found with a needle in his arm and um, they said Todd died of a heroin overdose. And I guess I, for as much as I cry, I really didn't cry that night. It was very strange, not like me at all. I mean, it's surreal to think back on it because um, I do recall times when my husband and I we were talking to Todd and he did, we'd have a discussion and he did use almost those exact same words. He said to Todd, I have no intention of burying my son. And yet we did.